G'day, I'm Colin Parker from mpem.org. Welcome to Pecha Kucha Night for SMAC 2013. I'm talking about pediatric emergency medicine for dummies. As critical care and emergency medicine docs, I know that you will find this situation relatively unstressful. So I'm not suggesting that my audience is a bunch of dummies. However, when faced with something like this, some of us tend to feel a little bit like this. So how do we equip ourselves for a situation where you feel a little bit out of your depth? I believe that there's four cornerstones to success in pediatric emergency medicine. You gotta know resuscitation, understand what's normal in kids, know your enemy in terms of pathologies, and the hardest of all, establish trust. Resuscitation. No surprises here. The interventions are exactly the same as for adults. The assessment may be different, but the interventions are the same. Don't ever forget glucose. If you need upskilling in this stuff, do an APLS course. Understanding normal. Now kids are in fact the same species as adults, but they have differences in anatomy and physiology which progress throughout them approaching little adulthood. So for example, neonates do periodic breathing, which is like Shane Stokes for little people. Babies can get urates in their nappies, which are red and look like blood. Normal. Toddlers have tantrums, we know that, but they also do breath holding spells, which can freak you out if you're not aware of it. So throughout every system, there's differences. Airway, at least 10 anatomical differences. Vital signs now have good norms reference ranges. They have a blood volume of 80 mils per kilo, a bit more than adults. ECG in young childhood showing right ventricular dominance. They have soft growing tissues with growth plates at the end of their bones which slip. And more importantly, they have a big head housing a CNS which is growing and developing as evidenced by normal milestones and normal social and cognitive development. Most acute medical problems in pediatrics come from the same six presenting complaints. Minor surgical things and major surgical things like trauma, pretty similar to adults, but six common presenting complaints in kids. Fever. Where's the source? That's the most important thing you need to figure out, otherwise you've got fever without source. We used to worry about occult bacteremia, it's gone. The big bad wolf of fever is still meningococcal disease. It'll still catch you out one in a thousand times. But most of the time, you'll be pretty safe if you follow the NICE guideline on feverish illness. Breathing difficulty couple of new players compared to the adult world. Croup, swelling of the cricoid, makes you bark like a sea lion, treated very effectively with oral steroids. Bronchiolitis, trickly snot running down into your lungs. You can't fix that, you can only support them with oxygen and fluids if they're taking less than 50% of their normal feeds. Asthma, same treatment as for adults. Different assessment, but same treatment and anything else outside of that in the respiratory system pretty much similar to adults. Diarrhea and vomiting. Think twice before you call it gastro, especially when there's just vomiting. Think of head causes, posterior fossa tumors, not common but terrible. Think of belly causes, surgical abdomen. Think of systemic causes like urinary tract infection, sepsis, even meningitis can present with diarrhea and vomiting. Seizures are probably the commonest cause of a lights and sirens visit to our emergency department. If it doesn't stop within five minutes by itself, it's probably going to need some intervention. Don't worry. Benzo, benzo, something else tube. If you've got IV access, something else might be phenytoin or phenobarb. If you don't, it might be peraldehyde rectally. Don't delay before putting the tube in more than an hour. Febrile convulsions, common but benign. If they're not waking up within one to two hours after, think about CNS infection 
especially if they've been on oral antibiotics recently. Tummy pain. Finding the serious causes amongst the more common causes is much better accomplished with an experienced hand on the belly rather than a bunch of blood tests. You should do a urine however and don't forget DKA as an uncommon cause of belly pain. The appearance and distribution of a rash might help you figure it out but the associated features are very important. Don't panic though if it's not atopic eczema it's probably a virus or urticaria caused by a virus. Two cool things to read up on Kawasaki disease and Giannotti Crosti syndrome. These six things make up more than three quarters of all the acute medical complaints in pediatrics. Here's ET to remind you to establish trust. Why? Because kids are precious. We need to display with our attitudes, skills and knowledge that we are competent. And I think we should teach attitudes before we teach skills or knowledge. Forget about a CT. Do a C and T with caring and thoroughness. Make sure that your whole audience is engaged in the magic show. Show them that you learned something at medical school. With caring, if you can't be caring, fake it. So there you have it. Resuscitation, understanding normal, know your enemy and establishing trust. Thanks for listening. Cheers.